the guys came in heavy guns, very tall. <laughs> and hey, you need to go with us. So I said, where's your warrant? One of them said, ah, order from the presidency, they asked for warrant. Who's them? I said, don't touch me, I'll follow you. Um, so my first client gave me 700. I added 300 to it. Make Wait, and 700 Naira or 700,000? Naira. Naira. Okay, so I was actually going to ask you, are you one of those who started a business with 1,000 and a half? Yes, that's, that's, <laughs> yes, that's the true story. Uh, may you know, <laughs> may you know, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do you assess know, what I like? You know, I think we even did over 200 million that year. Oh, you know, <laughs> so at some point, you guys, hey, talk about running show, a man fit on more Welcome to Rugged Man TV. Boss. <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's everything? I'm fine. Thank, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome up for more. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you beat my yourself. Where there are levels to this big mountain, so wow. Wow. Mm, I thank God. <laughs> I'm sure there's not everybody that gets to come in here. Yeah. That's why I'm, here. I'm hoping that uh, this meeting will lead to something, something great. I always tell people, um, I can come to you and beg you for money, but I'd rather come to you and you know see if the kind of business we can do, so that I'd rather bring value. I'd rather bring value than just come and and one of the worst things I hate is when I imagine me calling your number and you see my name and you go, oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> so I'd rather just come in and bring bring some kind of value and then yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rocky Man Roy KD and I'm with Anoga, my Oga. Uh, I've uh, by force I've joined I mean now a family member. He's Dr. Steven and Michael Stevens. So there's some people you meet you can remove a letter. So I remove S from my name, Stevens <laughs> to Steven now. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, boss. Nice seeing you again. Happy New Year. Thank you, happy new year. Thank you for having me on your show. You're welcome. Yeah, in fact, let me not say much. I'll just like him to I'll just let him introduce himself so you people know but put some respect on that. <laughs> So okay. I'm, I'm Stephen Akintayo. I'm a serial entrepreneur, real estate investor and developer, um, where I'm the chairman of GTEx um, Holdings and uh, founder of the Vector Foundation. I'm an author, I've bought over 40 books, um, speaker, um, I do many things, you know, and I'm married with three wonderful children. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love traveling as well. I don't know what to do at 4 a.m., but this is what I do at 4 a.m. I've traveled, I think, over 100 cities in the world, so no travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done like. <laughs> okay, when well, I think I've done like 15, what is that? Uh, I'll try. I'll try, I'll try, I'll try yeah, yeah. So when you're not being a billionaire, when you're not globetrotting, when you're not building, what do you do as a regular person? Um, so I, I ride bicycle with my kids. I play tennis with my kids and my wife as well. Movies. I love watching movies. Movies at the cinema or in the house or the Mo cinema in the house? Movie at the cinema. I love cinemas. Yeah, I love going to the cinemas. Um, just love. It's one of the things we pick up, me and my wife. We just love going to the cinemas. And in the process of going, we talk. A couple of us are coming back, we talk better and connect. Uh, so I do cinemas a lot. What else do I do? I meditate. Um, I think I do about four hours of meditation a day. Mm. <laughs> and I noticed you said talk. Mm. When you and your wife are going, you talk, you're coming yeah. back to talk. Meaning you really don't have that much time sometimes. Y y yes, we don't. I mean, there are times where I don't see my wife for a month. Uh, right? Yeah. So these are times one is able to catch up and, and, and connect and bond and, and 
so you don't even go to the movie much because of the movie it's just the experience it was a time opportunity the quality to talk time. and connect yes okay yes. okay oh madam <laughs> you know what you, you signed up for <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people want to reach us, man. They need to know it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, it's 2024, early 24, and um, I know you've been doing a whole lot of building and all. So what has been exciting for you in this 2024? Well, I, I think it's our latest project, um, you know, just, just by State Katy, Texas, in the USA. But specifically for immigrants who are living here and maybe have not dabbled in real estate, yeah. this is really to let them know, hey, you can do this and we're going to teach you how. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at some of the data, um, you know, people of color uh, haven't invested much in real estate. Some data tells you just 8% or less than 8% wow. of black people own their own property. And so I think there is that fear of do I invest and sometimes people have done it and, and they, they, they probably went bad. Also people also don't understand the investment aspect of that because sometimes you just want to have a home. Meanwhile, real estate is actually a vehicle for investment. It's over 400 units we're building um, on a 40 acre property, green and smart. When completed, it's going to be the largest green and smart um, development in all of US. Um, by the grace of God, um, we were raising $150 million for it. So it's exciting. I think that's an exciting project. <laughs> yeah, somebody mentioned $150 million. We're raising. It's investors who, who work with us, who make us able to do this thing. Yeah. You are raising because you are even trying because you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but we thank we thank God. Yeah, um, I know you are you are a philanthropist. Yeah. Um, how did you go? How did you get into this line of work? So we started um, sixteen years ago. I mean, we, I've been in business all virtually all my life. I started my first business as a teenager. But well, 16 years ago, we then registered as a bulk SMS company. So I very humble, 1,000 era selling SMS. So it was like an innovation. Before then, you use your phone to text. Now there was a technology that allowed you to sell 1,000 SMS at the same time, just copy and paste, and it can be customized. Um, so my first client gave me 700. I added 300 to it. Make it end. 700 Naira or 700,000? Naira. Naira. Okay, so I was actually going to ask you, are you one of those who started business with 1,000 Naira? But yes, that's, that's, <laughs> yes, that's the true story. Okay, so he gave so you 700 they were, Naira. Yes, they were a, a fellowship, a student fellowship. So they had a conference. So they needed to send campaign to invite people. So they gave me a database. I didn't even have a laptop. So I went to Cyber Cafe, you know, to send a campaign for them. And uh, of course, it took years. For the first seven years, I did not even touch five million naira in sales for the first seven years of the business. Mm -hmm. Right? But by the seventh year, everything's open. You know, I think we even did over 200 million naira that year. What year yeah. was this? Um, 2015. 2015, you yeah. made over 200 million. Yeah. So that was when. How much was the team? You know? <laughs> That was when the doors opened. Um, you know, I mean, and well, imagine the consistency from 20, 2008 to 2015. 15. A lot Just, of people probably would yeah, have given up. And in that period, mm -hmm. I experienced a lot. Uh, days I couldn't have 200 Naira to take Molue back. My office was in Kedja, but my house was in Songo because it's cheaper to live in Songo. <laughs> you know, and, and I needed to be in Ikeja because proximity to computer village, I could get all these computer village people to do SMS. Okay. You know, um, I, I, I didn't have 200 naira Mulwe. I slept in my office, mosquito finished me. The next morning, my body was swollen. Um, even the office I couldn't renew after one year. Um, we used to paste posters. I mean, I've been through a lot in business, yeah. What was the name of the company then? then it's say? called Gilead Bam. Uh, Gilead? Gilead Bam. Gilead Bam. You know, so oh. GileadSMS.com. 
<laughs> and has developed to to what today? Yeah, to GTX Holdings. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, GTX Holdings. <laughs> Let you tell us what GTX Holdings net worth is. So for us, net worth might be difficult to analyze because you, when you are into real estate, right, the value of the assets keeps appreciating on a regular basis. Um, and also, I tell people that it's not our money. And that's why some of us, people will say, well, we are prudent with money, we are not lavish, but it's also because it's not your money. People trust you. Any money given, I tell people, anybody that is rich, it's not their money. You'll get Elon Musk. Elon Musk's wealth is a function of the trust people will pose in it. So even buy Twitter of 40, and that's what, why, but most people don't read between the lines. To buy Twitter of 43 million, 23, 43 billion. Elon Musk had to borrow, um, <laughs> had to borrow money from the bank. He had to sell some Tesla shares. Had to get some Saudi uh, uh, Saudis investors for him to be able to buy Twitter at 43 billion. Yet, as at that time, it was said to be worth 200 billion. And the truth is that rich people are not that based on how you estimate them, based on liquid or cash account. They're always having to trade, invest, mm -hmm. and a lot of their wealth is a function, good afternoon, it's a function of investors, what investors are having to put in, and what people trust them with. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so that's basically about, we know that I mean, we, we have real estate assets we control, run into hundreds of millions across the world. Mm. So basically, he doesn't want to tell us how much. <laughs> <laughs> like so. I said, it's not my money. It's investors' money. Okay. Yeah, I'm just one of those investors too. I'm also an investor with the company. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking earlier, you talked about your first arrest what led to that and what was going on? Well, so remember I said I had book SMS. So I uh, were a digital marketing firm. I uh, had big clients then, Chivita, PZ, Unilever, and uh, name it, a lot of multinationals. We also had, you know, political clients, senators, governors, governorship aspirants, some win, some lose. Um, and we had gotten big. And by 2015, we were really a household name. Um, you know, such that, and because I stayed away from politics and politician, so usually other people get the job, but they still end up bringing it to us to execute. Uh, so by 2015, without ap applying for any of those jobs, I was the one handling Jonathan's SMS campaign nationwide. You know, we're involved in Voari's email campaign, you know. And we had the largest phone number database, the largest email database. database. So everybody had to come to us still. So a few, few weeks to the election, you know, I mean, they were cracking down on people who were believed to be involved in Buhari's campaign. And um, I think there was a main person they were looking for. I'm not sure they even, they just assumed I probably was the one. They probably assumed I was the main guy you know, the main brain behind the Zay Change campaign then. And they probably felt they had had a jackpot. Uh, so I was running training in my office and then the guys came in heavy guns, very tall. <laughs> and hey, you need to go with us. So I said, where's your warrant? One of them said, ah, order from the presidency, they asked for warrant. Wozam, I said, don't touch me, I'll follow you. So I followed them, we came out, entered their car. So I remember now asking, and you can imagine how I looked, you know, 2015, how young I look and all of that. So I said, and you said, the president asked you to come and arrest me. I said, you are sure? Because I'm the one handling his <laughs> SMS campaign. One of them said, you see, if you don't woo them, I know who they call drop name. You know, if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so at some point, the guy said, hey, Toba Ron in Sheru, Amanfi Tomoje. Then we just, you know, really cool. Just, you just imagine how I look. This guy looks so small, young, 
one boy with just the in was just the heavy like ah, one yeah yeah guy like that so got me to the office asked me to fill a document it was almost the fact jam jam questions were, were were joke compared to where was i born who was my girlfriend who were, i mean uh, may you know may you know spirit amen <laughs> do you assess well took me to and they had clinic in their in their place so you can't even said you yeah, died of any away. they tested me if i don't do any test the logo i test everything <laughs> and so by the evening they said well you know we'll allow you sleep at our reception they didn't put you inside they didn't put me inside cell but I didn't know the difference, honestly. <laughs> I know. I think it was the presidential part of it for you. That, you know. I didn't. I didn't know. But I didn't even know the difference because I remember waking up. I didn't even see, by the way. But 12 a.m., I just started praising God. I said, God, you know, I don't know anybody. I, yes, we're handling those campaigns, but remember, it wasn't directly you know yeah. um us uh, you know they didn't give us the job directly it was those who got it from the president that brought it to us so even the whole i'm handling uh, jonathan's campaign it was those who got the job that gave it to us um so i slept in their re- reception and um of course i had to praise god all through and reminding god i have nobody aside him the same guys we were talking was said Egmo, Egmo, in the in the company or down. Only to enter the director's office. You politician, you politician, you are calling us from Asura. So tomorrow, a lot of people don't know the difference between self-employment and actually owning a business. 